Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore how to cook in cleaner, faster, cheaper ways while at the same time increasing family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience as they shape up their shambas on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Carol, who are these little kids coming towards us? This is very strange. Ah. Hello, baby, how are you? Uh, where are you taking us? So uh -huh. you're taking us to mom. Hello. Oh, welcome. Thank I am you. Naomi Ruhara. Aha. Yeah. I'm a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> These are my daughters. This is Nurakia, my firstborn, and that is Nausha, my secondborn. Ah, the welcoming committee. Welcoming us to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are in Thakwa village in Githunguri and we are visiting Naomi Ruhara, a young and inspiring farmer who started farming from scratch in 2016. It was Grace, Naomi's mother-in-law, who triggered her interest in farming. Now they are both passing it on to Naomi's daughters, Nurakia and Nusha. That will make three generations of women farmers for you. But first, let's hear Naomi's story. I am born and raised in Malindi, but I came in Nairobi for my university education. I got my bachelor's in degree in commerce, and during that time when I was in college, I met my husband. So after college, after graduating, we had to come back to their place where he was living with his mom. So from there, that is where I got the culture of farming because his mother is a farmer. From her, I got a few concepts, but some of the concepts that I used, I use watching YouTube. Naomi started off with broccoli, cauliflower, and tomatoes, but she says she failed miserably. It was very difficult, even for myself. I didn't believe in myself. Every voice around me was telling me this is not cut for you. Even my own husband didn't believe I could do it. I was kind of depressed about it, but slowly I showed my interest and I showed my commitment to it. Today, Naomi owns three acres of land and leases another five acres. She has 42 cows and gets 300 liters of milk per day from 24 cows. She has pigs and chicken. And after her initial disappointments, she decided to concentrate on indigenous vegetables like nightshade or managu and spider flower or saga. Naomi also grows potatoes, but she has problems with the crop. That's okay. We are here to help and we've just the right expert for her. Let's go meet him. Naomi has dedicated half an acre to potatoes, but it's only for the family's consumption. She's not ready for the market yet. Our expert of the day, Duncan Mukona from Sijenta, can maybe convince her to go commercial. My biggest issue is uh, frost. One day you wake up and all of the potatoes are black. Duncan, yes. do you see any frost here? Uh, not Lily Tony. Yes. Uh, the challenge that uh, Naomi is facing is not uh, frost. Frost is a natural calamity. It's come because of the weather. But in this case, his challenge is blight, potato blight. So this is blight, yes, not this is a disease. When your crop has blight, the leaves turn black and they cannot grow well. This means the potato tubers will not grow well either. When it's raining, that's when infestation for blight get in and you can lose your entire crop out of that. In this case, I can show Naomi the solution that we have from Sigenta. The fr uh, first product is called Lidomil Gold. It's a fungicide that controls blight in potatoes. It's able to penetrate inside the system and protecting the crop from within. So it got the prevention in terms of blight control. We got another product by the name Levers. It's able to control 
bright that we can see with our naked eyes. Mm. The disease will not find itself into the soil to affect your tubers. For spraying your crops, you mix 50 grams of Ridomil gold in 20 liters of water. As for Revers, you put 20 milliliters in 20 liters of water. It is best to apply this preventatively. This way you avoid getting disease in the first place. Follow the instructions of the package when using the product. You should change between these two products. This prevents your crop from building resistance to either one. You will need to wait seven days after spraying before harvesting this crop. Only then is it safe to eat. This is called the pre-harvest interval or PHI. The best time for spraying are early in the morning or late in the evening. And never ever forget to wear your personal protective equipment, PPE, when you're handling chemicals. In this case, you find there are other challenges that uh, they affect your potatoes. Uh, we have disease like uh, bacterial wilt and fusellium wilt. In this case, these are diseases that have no control per se. There is no product that will apply and control purely uh, the disease. Okay. But these are also require farmers practice, where like uh, in this section, if you had planted potato last season, you will not return or do another potato. And that's what we are calling crop rotation. Like you cannot uh, do tomatoes here because they belong to that, uh, the same family. You can do like other leafy vegetable like cabbage, spinach. Okay, I, I wanted to ask about the residue of the chemicals. How does it affect the soil? Because most of us farmers, we want to farm for the market and markets like export market, they won't allow anything that has residue. Uh, the product have no uh, residue effect on the soil because you are controlling the bright on the crop. Two, the product are also registered for export. If your market is the export or local, they are allowed to be used uh, targeting the disease that you are fighting. Is uh, there not a, a chemical or rather a chemical really that can do one spray? You spray once and then, because this is where most of our money goes into. The product that we are using, they are cost friendly because you are assured of the protection and you are assured to live high because your youths are free from disease. Duncan went on to explain that when you put money into spraying with the right product, your crops are able to fight the pests and disease. As a result, you'll get a better yield and more money. For me, I feel good that I'll try the product and see how it goes. Naomi started planting nightshade or managu three years ago and has done so well that she's dedicated three acres of land to it. She practically harvests it daily. So big is the Kenyan's appetite for this vegetable. Everyone literally eats managu. It's true, a true, delicacy true. to everyone. Uh -huh. And the market is there, the demand is very high and that is why you see there is a lot of it here. Wow. Even when we harvest and they get old, they yeah. still get harvested. So it is a good business for me. Duncan, yes, Karo. what have you observed? I like what Naomi is doing. She is doing quite a commendable job. Mm -hmm. For me also, I love Managu so much. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at the spacings that she's using, the fallows, they are doing quite well. And you can look at her crop looking quite healthy. But now my major challenge is controlling of the pest mm -hmm. and the weeds. Weeds compete with your crop for nutrients, okay. for water, and also some weeds, they host some of the diseases and pests. So in this case, when you have a free uh, weeded uh, kind of uh, farm, the incidences of pests and diseases, you reduce them. Naomi has three acres of managu and is busy for managing her shamba. She doesn't have time to manually weed her farm. So, to control her weeds, Duncan suggests she uses a weed killer. We have a product by the name Fusilid 40. Uh, this is a product which is a selective herbicide for uh, broadleaf crops. It's able to clear all the grass weeds you can see and that you are reducing the cost of uh, production per se. So, this herbicide is selective. That means it will only clear the grasses. You will need to weed the broad leaves by hand. Uh, when it comes to pests and diseases, there are three kinds of pests that you'll get. Uh, spider mite or lead spider mite in this case, drips and aphids. And what pest does, as you can see, uh, let me show you some of uh, this. Uh, you find like the leaf is curling mm. inside because a uh, pest attack. Because the, a pest will attack on the lower side of the leaf. And by so doing, they are sucking the sap 
it's like they are withdrawing water and food from the leaf, mm -hmm. making the leaf to curl inside. So reducing the marketability of your produce. So to control the, the, the three kind of uh, pests we have talked about, uh, we have a product by the name Actara. Actara is an insecticide, a systemic one, so it's able to control a wide range of pests. For Actara, uh, the rate of application is 8 grams in 20 liters of water. Uh, PHI, what we are calling pre-harvest interval, it's three days. So you apply your product, you will wait for only three days to, and you are able to take that produce to the market because it will not have any harm to the consumer. Well, farmers, remember, you always have to wear protective gear. Once you have sprayed, do not harvest for the pre-harvest interval shown for the product. You know, there are those microorganisms that are living in the soil that we, I know they are good for feasting like nam feeds. Mm. Will they kill the, those uh, animals? Uh, the product I said they are tried and tested. The product can only control the targeted pest in this case. But I also wanted to ask also, because of it's also a problem as you can see I am a young mom and I still want to have children, but that spraying might harm me through the spring. We always say and we say and we repeat it again, it's always good when you're interacting with product, you wear personal protective equipment, mm -hmm. the PPEs. Every time you are handling the chemicals, you are doing the application, it's always good to wear those personal protective equipment uh, to keep you safe from the, the chemicals. And another thing uh, for expectant mother, because they are in that critical stage mm -hmm. and uh, they are very sensitive to any environment, they are put under, it's always good for them not to be involved in those activities. Mm -hmm. Even though she harvests 1,500 kilograms of nightshade or managu per week, Naomi can barely meet the demand for it. That's why she trains and subcontracts young farmers to satisfy the market. We plant together. Each youth has their own uh, kind of plant or crop they are dealing with. And uh, at the market, I am sure I will have consistency. Marketing for me it is very important because when I'm selling by myself, sometimes I run out of produce. So this customer has opportunity to go out there and source elsewhere, maybe at a lower prices and I might lose them. So for me to keep them here, I need consistency and that is why I work with youth groups. Ha! Ah, there you are, Tony. Yes, Carol. So, what do you think of our farmer? Oh, very impressive, very hardworking. Quite intelligent too, I must say. Oh yeah. we learn more about our farmer right after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Thakwa village in Gidunguri and we are visiting Naomi Ruhara. We've learned how to get rid of pests and diseases on potatoes and nightshade or managu. And since in this episode we've declared war on pests and diseases, we are going to battle it out with two other crops, spider plant or sagar and tomatoes. Spider plant or sagar is another crop Kenyans can't get enough of. Naomi, ever aware of demand and supply, has set aside an acre for the vegetable. She harvests 600 to 700 kilograms per month. Not so bad, but she still has some challenges. My challenge here, especially when it is raining a lot and it's too cold, mm. we tend to have it turn yellow. When it's like this yellow, when we pack it through the packing bags, in the market in the morning you'll find them, they have all turned yellow. Yes. So for me it is a loss because most customers don't like it when it's turned yellow. So that's the only challenge? It's the major challenge because you see when it turns yellow, the business is over. Uh, when it's too cold or too wet, you get a lot of uh, fungal disease coming in mm -hmm. and that's so you can see the yellowing part of her crop. Yeah, these are a fungal disease by the name downy mildew. Downy mildew. Yes, we have a solution for that. We have a product by the name Otiva. Otiva is a fungicide to control downy mildew. Okay. Uh, Letter of application for Otiva is 20 ml in 20 liters of water. Remember to read the instructions on the package when using the product. And at what stage do I spray? Because you see this is a produce that grows really fast. 
and uh, within one month I'm supposed to be harvesting it. Uh, you just need to have a program when mm. you have planted your target. Uh, weekly or 10 days intervals you can do your application. After three days the crop is safe to be consumed or to be taken to the market. So from the planting day and the 10th day I need to spray on the 10th day? After germination you can, uh, after two weeks you can do the first spray and then uh, um, after 10 days you can uh, apply the product. What do I do about the weeds? Because also it's another challenge. You see like here it's grown in patches. And the rate yes. at which here is grown, it's not the same here. And this is because you can see here there's less weeds, here there's more weeds. Exactly. Looking at uh, the germination percentage for your crop in this area, so because the germination is good and uh, the crop is forming a canopy, it, it smooths out the weed. So the weed will not germinate per se in this area. Okay. But where you have poor germination, in this case, because of those spacing, you find that the weeds, they are able to to the grow but what you can do before you prepare or before you plant your crop mm. in this case after preparing the bed you can just water the beds yeah, you let the weed to to come up and then you can do a, a, a herbicide for that to clear all the weeds and then after like uh, two weeks or so you can come back and plant your crop because this will reduce uh, the population for the weeds for the subsequent uh, season that will be coming because at this case, uh, weeding, when the target is there, mm. you find like when people are coming to weed, they can uh, uproot a lot of your crop and you may lose a lot. Yeah. Aha! So Duncan's message is loud and clear. Control your pests and diseases, but don't forget good farming practices in the process. <laughs> While we were wading deep in pests and diseases, Karis had set his sights on the big pen, and he really went for it. Shamba, shamba, shepa. Shepa. Shamba, shepa. Ime badilisha kilimo. Ime leta mabadiliko. Kilimo, 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 kilimo. Dio uti wa mgongo. Inchi zote duniani. Kilimo, 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 kilimo. Dio uti wa mgongo. Inchi zote duniani. Shamba. Shamba shepa, shepa, shamba shepa, ime badilisha kilimo, ime leta mabadiliko, ime badilisha kilimo, ime leta mabadiliko. Naishi maisha mazuri juu ya shamba, shamba langu, naipenda, shamba langu, inanilisha, shamba langu, shamba langu, juu ya shamba langu. Shamba langu Inasomesha watoto Shamba langu Juya shamba langu Iminunua piki piki Shamba langu Juya shamba langu Iminunua gari nzuri Shamba langu Juya shamba langu Imejena nyuma ya kifahari Naishi maisha mazuri Juya shamba Shamba langu Naipenda Shamba langu Shep shamba yetu mpaka kila mtu shep 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 Kila mtu shep ukiwa na shamba shep Ona yule mzee pia shamba yake wana shep 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 Hey hey you at home can you do it better than us Join our shamba shep up dance challenge Send us your best dance on WhatsApp at 0748-153120 or tag Shamba Shape Up on your social media post. Hashtag Shamba Shape Up Dance Challenge. Hey Naomi, oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. when you are chatting with expert, yeah. 
I repaired your pig spell. Wow. Can I show you? Ah, good. Okay, let's go. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I did the chicken good. wire. Wow. And also the mabati. Ah. And also. It's looking I good. Yeah. Ah, I love it. Okay. It's looking. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Asante sana. Naomi's failure with tomatoes still stings. She's not one to accept defeat easily. So, we are on our way to visit a farm in Tinganga village, which has 4,000 tomato plants. Duncan, our expert, will give us tips on tomato farming. And of course, Tony decided to tug along. There's another farm. Is that a farm? Tony. Are you introducing that? Yeah. yeah. Sharp corner ahead. Let's, let's slow down. Come on, Tony. I'm trying to help. Whoa, yeah. pedestrians! Oh Look my goodness, this is now just too much. Watch out for that car. No, here. You need to stop the vehicle. Tony, out. Toka, 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 toka. Toka. Out. Go ahead. Let's go. I'm telling you, we cannot even be able to talk in peace. Yes, Karo. Hey, how's it going? The going is good. Uh -huh. How is you? Ah, I can see you've done your inspection. Naomi, how is you? I'm great. great. Naomi is excited. This she is just beautiful. wants to see this what's happening nice. here. One thing you need to understand when you want to do uh, tomato production, one is to understand your soils uh, and the importance of uh, doing the soil test. One, you're able to understand uh, the soil pH, mm -hmm. uh, nutrition part of it, of your soil, what is lacking, what is available. Uh, the next thing that you need to also to understand is the variety uh -huh. of the tomato that you want. How do I get that assistance of knowing the best variety to do in my soil? Once you get your result for soil uh, test, uh -huh. uh, you're able now to understand your area or the region that you come from. You find like uh, this area, it's a uh, cold, so you need a variety which can uh, tolerate uh, that are called weather and also you need a variety that will give you more yield in terms of the fruit mm -hmm. also the shape of the fruit mm -hmm. because the market also demand that and also the other thing you look at longevity of harvesting from the period you'll start to uh, to pick or to harvest your fruits to the end you at least you need a variety which can give you four to six months mm -hmm. harvesting period Good. Mm -hmm. yes. all right so let's talk about managing management of tomatoes what does it entail uh, that's the big issue when it comes to uh, tomato ma management mm -hmm. because tomato is very susceptible to diseases and also to pests. Uh, the major pest that you'll get into tomatoes production is Tuta absoluta, being the most notorious kind of uh, pest. You can see these marks you can see here. That is a Tuta absoluta mm -hmm. uh, attack. Right. That's the most severe uh, pest today. Uh, destroying a lot of uh, tomatoes okay. in uh, most of the farmers' fields. Mm -hmm. uh, but from Sigenta, we have a solution for that. We have a, a product by the name Amprigo. Amprigo is an insecticide that control Tuta Absoluta. Okay. We apply at uh, 10 ml in 20 liters of water. Read the package to know how much of your crop the 20 liters will cover. Spray should be done uh, early in the morning or late in the evening. A mm -hmm. uh, PHI is only three days. Okay. After that, they are safe to be consumed. Mm -hmm. uh, for diseases, uh, the major disease that you'll get into tomatoes, uh, it's uh, bright. Mm -hmm. So you can still get it. Uh, you can look at how uh, the leaves are burning. And yeah. also the cost of the yellowing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. That will resort to that. Yeah. And uh, that this will reduce uh, high yeah, yield mm -hmm. eventually. Okay. Because uh, when the leaves are affected, and mm -hmm. that's where the uh, photosynthesis takes place, it means that uh, there's no food mm -hmm. to feed the fruits. Okay. Early blight appears six to eight weeks after transplanting. It comes when the crop is still young and it mostly affects the leaves. Late blight comes when the fruit begins to form. This is usually about three months after transplanting. Both are controlled in the same way. We have uh, two products that uh, we use to control early and late blight. One is Lidomil Gold. Lidomil Gold in a fungicide. 
uh, it is a systemic in this case, it's able to get into the uh, crop system and protect the crop from uh, late and early blight. Uh, rate of application is 50 grams in 20 liters of water. We got another product by the name Levers. Levers is also a fungicide, very good in control of blight. So in this case, alternate the two products. Yes. Right. Levers we apply at 20 ml of, uh, in 20 liters of water. Read the package to know how much of your crop the 20 liters will cover. Farmers, you know that prevention is better than cure. The best way to prevent early blight is to weed your tomato crop regularly. It's best to apply Ridomil Gold six weeks after transplanting your tomatoes so that it does not appear at all. In order to prevent late blight, make sure you prune the lower tomato leaves. This will help air move freely around your crop. You should also stake your tomatoes. Staking keeps the crop upright and again allows for air to flow freely. Loosely tie the main stem to the stake with a soft but thick rope that will not cut in to the stem over time. She needs to support her crop because you can see they are bearing a lot of fruits, yeah. so they need also to be supported. Okay. You also require to do the pruning. The pruning is removing of the leaves, especially the lower leaves, so that now the air circulation within the crop can get very old. And also when you're doing the spray, the product is able to get to every uh, leaves that is growing in that crop. I think I want to try, and I want to try uh, with uh, the same pieces, 4,000 pieces, and see how it goes. So that is something I want to work on. I love farming, and I don't want to stop farming. I want to grow my, my empire in farming and have a ranch of maybe vegetables, tomato, and cows. I bet Naomi will achieve her goal in no time. She's already negotiating the lease of two additional acres of land. She also has space for 45 more cows that she'll raise from her own calves. This is one farmer that we don't want to lose sight of. Speaking of which, where is Tony? There you are, Carol. Oh. How could you do that? But you're too impossible, Tony. You left me. Oh, I had no choice. Promise me you'll do that again. Tony, promise me you'll not be impossible again. I promise. I promise. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next time on Shamba, Shamba Shepherd. Shepherd.